Okay, we've gone through this to some degree already, but you've done a lot of shooting since then. So I, quickly, I just want to go over adding media to your DaVinci Resolve timeline, and then also different ways to remove that. So let's take a quick look. Here we are at the edit page, got a blank timeline up, and I'm just going to grab a clip and drag it down to the timeline. Now I'm in selection mode by default, which means I can grab it and move it around. I have my linked selection disabled so that I can click my picture and audio tracks independently, which is how I like to work. And what I'm gonna do is move along to her just leaving the chickens. And I could use the blade tool here and put a cut right there. But I'm gonna go back to selection mode because I have the blade tool mapped to the Y key on my keyboard. So I'm gonna click out in the open here so that I haven't just selected video or audio independently, hit Y. Now we can see there's an edit point. So I'm just highlight both of these, hit delete and remove them. Now we can see she's walking up to the barn, right? Well, let's say I wanna to cut to the wide. So I'm gonna bring up a wide shot. So we don't wanna bring the whole clip down, obviously. If I position my playhead, grab this clip and choose insert, it's gonna put it right where the playhead was, but it's the entire thing. And you could do it that way and then just scroll to where you want her to come in. And then I'm gonna hit Y on the keyboard and then just remove these, but that's time consuming. So let me undo all that. What we'll do, is up here on the clip source viewer. I'll position it to where I want her to come in and I'm gonna hit I on the keyboard for an end point. And then I'm gonna scroll to where I wanna stop, hit O for an out point. And side note, I have these mapped to the E and R keys on my keyboard. That way I can keep my right hand on my mouse and use my left hand instead of jumping over to I and O, which is just more cumbersome. But that said, what we've done is we've told Resolve we only want to insert this part of this clip into the timeline. And so with that selected, it's going to put it wherever my playhead is. So I can either drag it over and say insert, or I can hit the insert icon here, or I can hit V on my keyboard, which is what I have mapped to insert. And you can see it shows that right here. If you hover over these, it shows you what key is mapped to them. So I'm going to hit V, and there we go. So now if we play it, and there it is, great. When you put an in and out on your clip, if you wanted to change those, you can click the in or out point and reposition them. You can also clear them by hitting Option X on a Mac. I personally have the clear mapped to my G key on the keyboard, but either way, if you hit that, it clears them both. Same thing applies to a timeline. If I put an in point and an out point on my timeline, I can hit Option X or G with my mapping to clear it out. So what we just did is kind of like a three-point edit. You'll hear that term reference with editing, and so let me just define that really fast. A three-point edit is this. Let me just remove this, and I'm gonna right-click and say delete through edit because I basically brought this clip back together and removed the edit point. I'm gonna go back up here again and mark my in, mark an out, and then I'm gonna go back down to my timeline and choose exactly where I want that to be inserted and put another in point. And this is telling Resolve, hey, take this in and this out from the clip and insert it at the end point on the timeline. So it doesn't matter where my playhead is now, it's going to look at this. So I'm gonna hit V and there it is. That's a three point edit, it's one, two, three. Now let me undo that. Another version of a three point edit, which I don't ever use, I don't think, but just so you know what it is, I'm gonna clear the in and outs on both of these. Let's say I had a random clip, maybe some flying birds or something that I wasn't being very specific with. And I wanted it to fill this area of the timeline. I could put an in and an out on the timeline and then just specify on the clip where I want it to start and put an in point there. And now if I hit V, it's going to fill this in and out space with this clip beginning here with no defined end point. See how that works. Okay, so that's another version of a three-point edit. Okay, cool. Now let's say I didn't want to insert. Maybe I wanted to overwrite. So I'm gonna do a new endpoint. Oh, and by the way, I didn't tell you that. So I told you how to clear them. But let's say you have an endpoint and an outpoint already. Well, you can also, instead of clearing, just move to the new spot and, and hit I again, and then hit your O again, and it'll just move them. So with that said, if I position my playhead, 
and then drag this over with the in and out marked and choose overwrite instead of inserting which kind of ripples the whole timeline down it's going to overwrite it's not going to move any of the timeline so the timeline didn't move see that whereas if I do insert the timeline ripples down and that will do everything after this edit point is going to ripple down so if I had a full timeline and I wanted to insert a clip I'm always going to do insert because I'm typically not wanting to overwrite what I already had there and then with that you can also overwrite with this icon or as you can see I have B on my keyboard mapped to overwrite now we have a third icon here called replace so let's bring up a different clip and let's say I want to replace this clip in its entirety with footage from here. I'm going to clear the in and out, and I'm just going to set a new in. And so I'm going to put my playhead over this. I'm going to drag this over and say replace. And it replaces that entire clip. If I move it over here, I'm going to clear the in to use the full clip. And this time, I'm just going to use this icon. It replaced as much as it could, but this clip wasn't as long as that entire clip. So it just went as far as it could. Okay, a few other things. When we're in selection mode, if we grab a clip and move it around, and I have link selection disabled, it's going to let me get the audio and video out of sync. And it's going to tell me by how much they are out of sync. So if you ever see this on your timeline, this could potentially be a problem unless you're doing it on purpose. And so if I bring it back, it'll tell me when they're in sync. And when you're moving a clip around, as you can see, it ate into this clip when I moved it, even though I moved it back. It happens in overwrite mode. If I let go and then take it away, it's, it's eaten into that clip. I can drag it back, of course, but it's overwriting as I do it, unless I don't let go of the mouse. Okay, I'm gonna put that back. Now let's say I wanted to maybe take this clip and put it right here. Well, if I highlight it and do Command C to copy on Mac, Control C on Windows, and I go right to this edit point and I do Command V, well, it overwrote it. It didn't ripple the timeline down. So if I undo that, instead of doing Command V, if I do Shift Command V, it inserts it. It ripples everything down. So that's super handy. You will use that all the time when you're editing, especially if you're bringing things from, say, one timeline to another. So for example, let me go to another timeline here, and I could highlight all of this, Command C, go back to my blank timeline, and go to this edit point and do shift command V and it puts it all in there and even though I didn't have these audio tracks added it went ahead and added them for me so that's a brief overview about getting footage on your timeline we're gonna look at other options to do that like multiple tracks etc but really fast let's talk about removing footage from your timeline there's two main ways to do that one is just to highlight a clip and hit the delete key and that's what Resolve calls a ripple delete. You saw it moved everything in the timeline over when I did that. I'm gonna undo it. Another way is just to lift it out. And so there's gonna be scenarios where you're using one or the other. Just be aware of what they do. So I'm gonna put that back. And you can find those from the menu. I have a map to my keyboard, but if you go to edit, delete selected is your delete key, and you'll see ripple delete here as well. So delete selected just does that and then ripple delete there you go a big part of editing is being aware of the sync in your timeline it's surprisingly easy to get things out of sync if you're not paying attention especially when you have linked selection disabled now typically you're gonna want it disabled and you'll see that when you start editing your film together but if it's enabled it's hard to get stuff out of sync or it's, it's more difficult because it's automatically selecting both at the same time right but if I have that disabled I can just click on the video and look what it did it shoved the audio for that video over and overwrote the stuff from here it's not what we wanted to do so this all goes back to performing backups whether it be command s or manual project exports command e and saving your hard work hey and listen if you like this training and you're an aspiring filmmaker, check out my online film school, writedirect.co. Write and direct. The goal of my school is to help you sidestep the minefields that claim the dreams of so many other filmmakers. What do I mean by that? 
Well, look at me. I did the traditional thing. I went to Los Angeles, went to film school. And yeah, I learned a lot, but I spent a lot of money. And if you want to direct movies, when you graduate from film school, there's kind of only one way forward. And what is that? To begin directing movies, but it's on your dime. Your education will not land you a job as a director. So if you spend all your money on your education, you can see you're in a, you're in a tough spot. Write and direct teaches you how to make a movie from beginning to end. We begin in development with story and we go in granular steps all the way through post-production. You learn how to do it all so that you're empowered to pursue your dreams. WriteDirect.co. I hope to see you there. And if not there, I'll see you here on the channel very soon. Thank you.